Good evening and welcome here, everyone. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. For the yoke that was weighing upon them and the burden upon their shoulders, you have broken into pieces, O God, our Redeemer. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear our prayer in this Advent season for ourselves and for our families who live with painful thoughts and memories. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of your Christ, who shares our life in joy and sorrow, death and new birth, despair and promise. Amen. Amen. My name is Micah Smith, and I'm the pastor of Living Hope Church. And Julia Tabernero is going to be working with me as well. She's one of our uh, directors here of our ministry services. Tonight, as we gather together for this, our solstice blue Christmas service, our hope here is to take some time to pay attention to the losses in our life. These may be loved ones. These may be opportunities, or opportunities over the past year. These are the ways that our relationships have been strained or have struggled to survive and thrive. In, during this pandemic season. We're gonna pay attention to our losses. We're gonna name them. We're gonna have an opportunity to name the names of people that we have lost in this last year and even before then. And as we do so, I would encourage you to take a moment right now, if you're able to go grab a candle, even if you're not on camera, I would encourage you to take a moment right now and grab a candle so that you can light it as part of this service. If you wanna participate in remembering someone, have a candle sitting beside you and be ready to light it uh, when, we, when we do that there. I'll give you a moment right now to go grab, grab a candle if you would like. Taking us through the service tonight will be myself and Julia, and we'll be alternating speaking parts going back and forth. And then Don Lehman has recorded some video that we'll be including as part of our instrumental music. And at one point, there will be the opportunity for you to unmute yourself if you'd like to share a prayer or a loss that you want to remember at that time. Let us continue now in worship as we listen to I Wander As I Wonder, I Wonder As I Wander. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 and 25 to 31. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. 
To whom will you compare me, and who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God. The creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, easy and my burden is light. The first candle we light to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their voice, their face, the memory that binds them to us in this season. We hold them before God, giving thanks for their lives in ours. We've all come bearing our own hurts, sorrows, and broken pieces, and I want to invite each of you to offer your own personal wounds to the God who loves each of us so deeply and wants to carry our pain. God waits patiently, gently calling out, give me your pain, 
come to me, all you who labor and are heaven, heavily, heavy laden, and I will refresh you. I invite each of you to light a candle. As you light the candle, remember that it is God who lights a candle in our darkness. He walks with us into these dark places and he holds us close until we are also able to shine with him. We're going to have um, some slides come up with some names and photos and um, some added prayers or songs or poems um, just to remember, remember people that we've lost. Dale Provo, who died on July 23rd, 2020, the beloved husband of Phyllis Provo. She wrote this beautiful prayer. Father, thank you that my beloved Dale is safely in your arms, free at last from all pain. Grant those of us who grieve your comfort and strengthen our faith that you will keep us in your care until we are reunited with our loved ones again. Amen. Next, we remember Colby, Colby Cave. He passed away on April 11th this year, 2020. He was 25 years old. In this beautiful picture, um, it includes his wife, Emily, his puppy, Chester, his sister and brother-in-law, Kai, and David, his niece, Sydney, and his parents-in-law, Terry and Gary. And here's an excerpt from Almost Home by Mercy Me. When all that's been lost is made whole again, when these tears and this pain no longer exist, no more walking, we're running as fast as we can. Consider this our second wind. We're almost home. We remember Anne Mackey, who passed away on November 23rd of this year. The Mackey family, um, we just had a memorial for her. We've been, um, yeah, remembering her passing in this last little while, and we'll continue to remember her and her family in our prayers. Gwen Marshall, uh, September 29, 2020, she went to be with Jesus. And in this picture are uh, her grandchildren, Emil, my sister Lisa, my sister-in-law Amanda, myself and my brother Scott, and she's holding Abigail, her great-granddaughter. This is the last stanza of a poem she wrote in 1974. She writes, yes, I wonder, I ponder as I watch the wind that makes the cedars sway and bend. And I know that heaven's beauty is too much to comprehend, that the God who made all nature and yet loves me even more has given all these for this life, yet has greater far in store. And we remember the cousins of Pearl, Graham's cousins, three of them who passed away in November of this year. May, who lives in Ireland, lived in Ireland. Darlene from Souk, BC, and Joy, who is in Washington State. And we also want to remember, there's no slide, but um, we want to remember Ronnie, Ronnie Anderson, Cara Van Tol's mom, who passed away on December 22nd. 
Lord God, each of us takes our loved one by the hand and leads them to you. You are the God of love, and here we present our loved ones to you. Accept our love and our thanksgiving as we entrust them to your loving care, Lord. We want our loved ones to be free with you, at home with you. We ask that you would save a place for us beside them. And we ask that you would fill us with the motivation and the energy in the days ahead when we feel like giving up. Remind us often of our true home with you. And when we are caught up in the desolation of the journey here, help us to find joy in the people, the events, and the beauty of nature which surrounds us. Keep us connected to you, Lord, we pray. Give us a sense of your presence. Allow us to be near you as our loved ones are. Thank you, Father, for the gift of each of these people that they have been in our lives. We want to believe that we will celebrate the treasure of love with them again when we are all in your presence forever together. May this truth sustain us in the days to come. We ask that you would take our sad, our aching hearts and comfort us. Comfort us, for we only feel hollowness and emptiness. O God, who sorrows, O God, who suffers, draw near to us, even now. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. second candle we light is to redeem the pain of loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs with the security they bring, the loss of health in ourselves or in family members, the loss of joy and peace in our lives from the stresses which surround us, the loss, of lonely, the loss and loneliness we experience when our loved ones don't share our faith the loss of opportunity to share in friendships with others in this season, the loss of our gatherings and shared meals, the loss of our community engagement. We've not been able to celebrate as we'd like to this year. We've not been able to mourn as we would like to this year. Sovereign God, as we gather up the pain of this year and the past, we offer it to you. We ask that into our open hands, you will place the gift of peace. I invite you to take a moment to remember those losses that you felt. I invite you to name those losses in the silence of your hearts or out loud in the quietness of where you are right now, or even feel free to unmute yourself and share it aloud with the group. We are so close to our family. Uh, Sarah's sisters, one lives in Powell River, one in Nanaimo, and my brother on Main Island, and my folks are there as well, and we don't get to see them. We're look, we were looking forward to being out here in this part of the world with them, and we mourn and grieve that we aren't able to celebrate Christmas with them.
Every Christmas, I am surrounded by the memories of my mom, and she passed away a few days before Christmas. So just the nostalgia of the season and everything that I do with my kids um, reminds me of her. And then on top of that, the time of year that she died is added to that. So uh, lots of stuff comes up, I think, in the subconscious just through sights and sounds and familiar things that you do at Christmas that have a bit of a, a little bit of a, a more bitterness than they ever had. Um, yeah. Not that it's all bitter, but there's a little bit there. O oh God of mystery, we turn our hearts to you. We come before you in need of peace, grateful for the mystery of life and ever keenly aware of your promises of guidance and protection. We want to place our trust in you, but our hearts grow fearful and anxious. We forget so easily that you will be with us in all that we experience. as we have named our losses of opportunity or of person or of relationship, all that has been strained and lost in this season. Father, teach us to be patient with the transformation of our lives and to be open to the change which we are now going through. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. The third candle we light for those who experience a loss of direction in their lives. God of the Exodus, you led Moses and your people through the wilderness to a new land. Hear our prayer. We mourn the loss of good dialogue in our public and political spheres. We mourn the loss of truth as a grounding principle. We feel lost. We want so much to have a sense of direction to know where we are and where we ought to be headed, but the darkness and the questions stay. You ask us to be full of faith, 
to believe deep within that you are our signpost, that you are our wisdom and our guide, and to trust in your presence. Your words to us are clear, do not fear, I go before you. God of our depths, we cry out to you to be our guide. Help us to have a strong sense of inner direction and grant that we may have the reassurance of knowing that we are on the right path, that we are following you. Take our lives, Lord, and use them according to your will. Take all that is lost in us and bring it home with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. The, vo the fourth candle we light as a sign of hope. The hope that is offered to us through the Christmas story of Jesus coming to earth to redeem and renew us and all of creation. We remember that God who shares our life promises, promises us a place and a time of no more pain and no more suffering. O oh God, whose spirit is known by those who hearts, whose hearts are thankful and who makes cheerfulness a companion of strengths, lift up our hearts, we pray, to a joyous confidence in your care. Guide us when we cannot see the way. Teach us to know that a shadow is only a shadow because the light of eternal goodness shines behind the object of our fears. Where there is love in life, teach us to find it. Help us to trust it and enable us to grow in the power of love. So may our lives bring comfort and encouragement to others. And we ask this grace in the name of Jesus Christ, whose life is our light. Amen. After this last verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, we're going to have a time of silence for about 30 seconds or so. Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
In the spirit of this season, let's come to God, our provider and sustainer, and ask him to provide all the life-giving gifts that we need, that only he can supply in his wisdom and goodness. For ourselves, Lord, as we participate in this Christmas as people coping with our great loss, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our families and friends, that they may continue to help and support us and others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the people we love who have died, for all the losses we know in our lives, that all may be redeemed by your Easter promise of resurrection and restoration. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our family and friends, Lord, that you would bless them with the love, peace, and joy that comes from being in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world as proclaimed by the Christmas angels on that faraway hillside. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For greater understanding of the lessons of love and acceptance as taught by Jesus, your Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of deep compassion and steadfast love. We know you're listening to the prayers of your people. In your grace, Lord, give us all, especially those who are grieving and troubled this Christmas, the blessing we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we close our service this evening, we recognize that there is darkness present in this world and in our lives and even in our own hearts. As people who are familiar with this darkness, we also know that we, are, we live lives illumined by the light of Jesus Christ. And at Christmas time, we wait for him again to come to shine his light into our life, to bring his light as a sign of his hope for his kingdom to come now and in the future. And we need his light to come as peace, to guide us towards peace and to bring peace into our life. And his light, of course, brings joy to us as we know his presence. Even in the darkest spaces, his light brings us joy. And we need his light, for his light leads us ever towards love. May this Christmas be a season in which you're able to sense, to see, to know the light of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace, now and forever, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh,